Hey, I'm Nick. Welcome to the Pod Cafe. Oh, hey, Nick. I'm not used to seeing you here. Um, well, I I mean, I, I work here, uh, so... I'm just used to seeing some some form of you of someone else. Hey, I'm Nick. Welcome to the Pod Cafe. <laughs> Hi, I'm Emily. It's nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. Why don't you come uh, have a seat? I would love to. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I'm Nick. Welcome to the Pod Cafe. Are you going to stop doing that? <laughs> stop doing what? Repeating yourself. I don't know. I don't know what you mean. Uh, why don't I just go grab you some coffee? That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Hey, I'm Nick. Welcome to the Pod Cafe. Okay, I'm going to stop doing this. <laughs> do you know? Do you remember um, 10 Second Tom? From 50 First Dates? Yep. Yeah. That's my character today. I feel like those were all less than 10 seconds. Okay, I'm five second Tom. <laughs> okay, well, just want to make sure we're being accurate here. Okay. Um, What kind of coffee are you drinking? Well, I uh, revisited my... Well, I didn't actually drink it on the podcast. I just mentioned it, I think, last time. But I revisited the cold brew. Oh. Because I was so blown away by, um, you know, the sweet cream mm-hmm. last time. I wanted to see if I could change my world again with the uh, the other one, the salted. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's interesting. I, I thought it was salted caramel. Mm-hmm. And it is not. It's literally just salted cream. Um, which is actually still very good. I don't think it's quite as good as the sweet cream. But it was still very good. Interesting combination. There's something about the just regular cold brew foam, though, that I, I just feel like the, the cold brew taste. You don't like it? Or you do? I do like it. Yeah. There's something okay. about just the regular old cold brew that really, really... Uh, You're into it? Does it for me. Yeah. Mm. But the salted was an interesting variation. Okay. Yeah, I would do it again. All right, that sounds great. I mean, it's it's cold brew season, so you can just keep. Uh... Yeah, it was listed as one of the summer favorites. Oh. Specifically, the salted cream. You know what the crazy thing is, though? So a regular cold brew mm-hmm. is like sixty calories. You get the salted cream, two hundred and thirty. So what's that about? Uh. The, the word cream Yeah but <laughs> That doesn't mean anything First of all it's just like a little cream on top uh, And Why is it What is it like what is the, It must be more than just salted Because You know the, the Regular cold brew has foam mm-hmm. But it's only 60 calories So what's the difference Between this foam I don't know Whipped cream is only 15 calories. Mm Mm-hmm. So, you'd think they could figure out a way to salt your cream without adding over 100 calories. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I guess they can't. I guess not. Bummer. Or they just don't want to. Maybe they don't want to. Mm Mm-hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Me neither. What are you drinking? Um, I'm also drinking a cold brew. I'm using the cold brew maker thing you gave me. Uh huh. The beaker. Yep. <laughs> the beaker. The beaker. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I bought this. Uh, I don't know some random coffee beans when I was in Portland last weekend, and then. Mm-hmm. I, you know, did the, the coarse grind and put them in coarse the grind. thing and Not made a, a cold grind. brew. Yeah. Do you think it would work with a fine grind? I feel like I would be drinking a lot of coffee grinds. Oh, really? Because there's what? There's holes in the middle? Uh-huh. So it would come out? Yeah. Can you make coffee with no grind? Just the beans? I'm not sure. Maybe. Hmm. How long did you let it sit for? 
About a day. A whole day? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Interesting. How much does it hold? Um, a lot. It's like a pitcher. Is it that big? Yeah. Dang. Mm-hmm. But you can use any coffee? I think so. Seems like it. So what is a cold brew, really? Just coffee steeped in water for a long time? Yeah, it's like the the way a coffee is made. Hmm. It's brewed cold. I get that. <laughs> I just thought it was maybe a different kind of bean since the caffeine concentration is higher in cold brews than regular coffee. Hmm. I don't but know. But I guess it's just because it sits in there for a while. I think so. Huh. Interesting. You ever tried brewing coffee with coffee? That sounds disgusting. You know, like like a if you're doing a pour over mm-hmm. or even just a coffee pot and you put coffee in the water where the water goes yeah. and then brewing co- a cup of coffee. Yeah. What do you think would happen? I think your machine would break. You think? <laughs> Eventually. It's just liquid. Yeah, hmm. I think it would Weird. break. Might have to experiment. Yeah. It's a it's an interesting idea. Okay. Yeah. So I have an interesting thing I would like to talk to you about. Sure, hit me with it. Okay. So at work we were talking about So I work in, you know, supply chain with like people that just basically sit all day and think about how we can do something better than we're already doing it. It's really stressful, honestly. Just um, like in life or in yeah, business? just everywhere. Everywhere. It's always like, there's got to be a better way. Uh, yeah. And so I was talking to one of my coworkers, and his, like, new thing is he wants to um, better utilize space that is currently being used for, like, cemeteries and, like, burying people. I have a couple questions already. Sure. On uh, one, what is y- be- a better use of space? When you say utilize space better, like for what? Well, I mean, for places like San Francisco that has a housing crisis. Like, if we remove all the cemeteries, how many more houses could we build? Meaning there's not enough Correct. houses in San Francisco? Correct. For the amount of people that live hmm. here. Why not? Because of space? E- I would have thought the opposite problem because of how much it costs to live there. It's probably a little bit of both. Do you think that contributes to the homeless problem? Because a lot of people want to live there, but they there's not enough houses, so they just decide, well, I'll just be homeless. At least I still live in San Francisco. Um, but they would they would buy a house if there were houses? No. No, I don't think. Oh. I think that's a different issue. <laughs> okay. I think that's a very different issue. All right. So mm-hmm. more houses. So I think um, getting rid of cemeteries is a pretty good idea. Um. Yeah. So here's the funny thing. Not funny thing. Here's some facts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <Here's a> joke. <laughs> in Japan. Um, oh. 98% of all deaths are cremated. Hmm. Because they don't have cemeteries. So... None? Not one? Not one cemetery? I, I don't know. I mean, it's only 98%. Well, they, they gotta have one. Yeah. It's not 100%. That's kind of besides the point. Are you listening or not? Uh, yeah. Okay, so what they do is because they actually have an issue of too many people to cremate so mm, they yeah. have these things to cremate huh too many to cremate yeah because people what die all the time P- you can only you can pay to like be cremated on your own or like it's cheaper to do like group cremation like it's not like they're just burning bodies all day so <laughs> while they and there's a certain like thing about how much time a body has can be on land or something. I don't know. Once it's deceased. 
So they have these things called floating corpse hotels. Floating corpse hotels. Yeah. Are you familiar? No, but this sounds fascinating. I think it needs to be like turned into a book or something. Corpse hotels? Yeah. It sounds like an interesting like setting for a horror story. So, well, it's not. It's not scary. It's like a, it's like a place to hold people. So, um, Dead people? <laughs> yeah, until they can be cremated. So Isn't basically, that what a morgue is? Well, that no, because a morgue only houses the body, so then you can like do the embalmment shit. Which, if you mm. don't cremate, then you don't have to do any of that. Mm. So, these are like an alternative to morgues, so that okay. where bodies are kept in like cold storage, and then... Okay. They're, like, eventually cremated once there's, like, the space or whatever. Interesting. So it's like a cremation waiting room. Yeah, because crematoriums are too busy. So now this this is, like, a whole new business, floating corpse hotels, where they just store the bodies, wait a few days, and then get through the, the busy Japan crematoria. Do you think crematorium sounds kind of delicious? Kind of. Sounds like where they make some candies or ice cream or something. What's the difference between a crematorium and a moratorium? What's a moratorium? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess that's what Google's for. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And so these, like, corpse hotels are also places where, like, families can hold, like, a a more affordable funeral or like a vigil for their deceased loved one because funerals are expensive yeah yeah they are why do people have funerals that's weird well that's the thing that's why i think you could never get the united states to be at the percentage of cremation that japan is at because religion kind of gets Mm. in the way like i think it's like the jewish culture does not cremate at all they bury bodies oh really and then there's other i think there's just might not always be religious but like certain groups that would just never cremate yeah so, it's just a cultural thing yeah so also I think it'd be difficult. it's probably a pretty big business that they don't want to lose money on right what uh, like well i guess they still have funerals right well, I mean, it would essentially put like the casket makers out of business. Funeral yeah, homes that's would a go big away. business, I bet. Yeah, I mean, all of that. But what a better use of space! And then we don't have all these just bodies in the ground. And yeah, that's a it's a weird thing. I'm interested in opening a corpse hotel now. It does seem like a waste of space. By the way, <laughs> a moratorium is uh not what i thought it was it is completely unrelated yeah i'm um, kind of thinking um, that a moratorium is a delay or suspension of an activity or a law in a legal context it may refer to the temporary suspension of a law to allow a legal challenge to be carried out can you use that in a sentence <laughs> uh sure you're looking for examples a in a sentence but one country's moratorium is another country's protectionism, mm. and the U.S. is suspicious of Europe's actions. That was said by Jeffrey Kluger on September 13th of 1999. Also, in 2000, Illinois declared a moratorium on executions after 13 death row inmates were exonerated. That's a sentence. All right. So they I temporarily get suspended executions. Okay. I get it. It has yeah. nothing to do with what I was talking about. Yeah, but like crematorium, moratorium, mm-hmm. sound related, but apparently are not. Nope. Um, I'm very interested in these, uh, I almost called it a ghost hotel, but uh, the corpse hotel is what it's called. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in the layout. What do you mean? Well, do they have... Their own rooms? Are they all housed in like one room? Like, is space. this a. Hmm? I have no idea. I've never been to one. Okay. 
Me, well, obviously me neither, because I never even heard of them before. I don't know if you can really see what they look like. I think there are rooms in them, though, because, like I said, people can do vigils and funerals in there. So there's, like, a space. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's basically like boxes of bodies everywhere. Just boxes of bodies everywhere? Yeah, Google image it. Yeah, I'm looking. And then they have like well, a little space like... where you can do a pretty cheap funeral and then. I see. Mm -hmm. And then they just go back in their hotel door. <laughs> Interesting. So they have these because of the wait to get cremated. Yeah. Huh. Mm hmm. And then, okay. So then they get cremated and then given to the families, and then their room opens up. Yep. And then for we the can... next body to be cremated. Yep. Fast. Are you to be cremated? Me? Yep. I'm hoping by the time I die, we get some cooler options. Like what? Like what would be ideal for you? Actually, I like the option of being turned into a tree. Yeah, that's an interesting option. So is being turned into a firework. Mm, less interested in that option. Really? I'm very interested in that option. What can I do with my ashes? When I die. Mm -hmm. 11 things to do with cremated ashes. Here we go. Let's see if any of them spark your interest. Scatter them if you want to just be scattered. Okay. Um, bury them, which seems counterproductive. Um, it takes store up them less home. space, I guess. D yeah, you could have less cemeteries. Um, you can store them at home. If you're not Catholic... Um, apparently Catholics don't do... Oh, yeah. Isn't cremation not a thing in Catholicism? Um, I don't think that's true. You don't? No. Okay, I'm going to have to Google that next after this list. Build a reef out of them. Um... You might consider scattering the ashes in the ocean, or even better, a company called Eternal Reef can turn ashes into a concrete reef that will provide protection and habitat for ocean critters. You interested in that at all? No. Okay. Well, you can, um, there's the tree option. You can turn them into a tattoo. Are you interested in that? Um, how does that work? Some tattoo artists will mix a portion of your loved one's ashes with ink to create a more memorial tattoo that you can keep with um, for your whole life. And if tattoos are your thing, this might be a pretty good option because, um, no, nope, not because, but be sure to do your homework about any potential health risks. There might be health risks. There isn't much scientific data out there one way or the other, um, but talk to your uh, favorite tattoo artist to see if it's possible. Okay. We'll talk You're not to interested him. in that option? I don't know. That's a weird option. I don't know if I like the idea of any ashes in my skin. I don't get why I would put the ashes in my skin. Other people would have to take my ashes and put them in their skin. That's what I mean. Yeah, that seems kind of weird. We don't need to do that. So yeah, it seems weird to have other people's ashes uh, on your body at all times. Mm -hmm. Um... You could be turned into gunpowder um, and become, you know, ammunition. You can be sent to the moon. Would you like to go to the moon, your ashes? Um, no, I don't think so. Well, how about this? You can have a one-way or round-trip ticket, so you could go to the moon and come back. It just seems like a waste. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bring anything back. I'm not you like providing. I wouldn't even know you went there. <laughs> yeah, that seems just a little wasteful. You can turn them into a tune. 
Um, a company a called Vinyly will turn the ashes into a vinyl record. Oh. Hmm. That's interesting. I'm interested in that one. Yeah, that's an interesting option. Um, you can make them shiny. Um, there are several companies that will turn cremated ashes into jewelry. Hmm. That's interesting. That's another, yeah, that's an interesting option. You also could, you could literally creepy. be passed down from generation to generation. Hmm. Um, the last one is give them a hug. What? If you want a snuggly way to remember your loved one, nope. consider storing the ashes in a stuffed animal. Ew. <laughs> gross. No, because as soon as a dog chews that apart... Disaster. That's pretty crazy. I like the music one, and I like the uh, firework one. The music one I didn't know was an option. That seems weird, but I'm not against um, it, I guess. Half licks believe in cremation. Let's see. Catholics do not favor cremation because they believe in resurrection of the body after death. Mm-hmm. The church earnestly recommends that the pious custom of burial be retained, but it does not forbid cremation unless this is chosen for reasons which are contrary to Christian teaching. So they don't want you to cremate because they believe in zombies. Mm. Yeah, see, that's another thing. Maybe if we just cremate everyone, zombies will never be a problem. That's definitely an answer to that issue if if anyone's worried about that. Yeah, if I'm generally no body, not worried about it, back. but it could be a solution for those people. I'm not so much worried about it either. Mm-hmm. But it seems like, you know, instead of being a prepper, seems like a good, you know, just solid um, insurance policy in case for whatever reason it ends up being a thing. At least we could plan for that, you know. Why not just take that potential catastrophe off the board? Um, I think I'm confused by something you said. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> could you point me to it? Maybe I could be more clear. Um, no. Okay. <laughs> because I was listening to you and then I got confused and then you kept talking and I forgot why I was confused. Okay. Yeah, okay. So um, Yep. That's no mind. problem. We'll let we'll let the listeners figure it out. Yeah, okay. We'll see if they were also confused. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um moving on. So should we open a corpse hotel? I wonder how lucrative that business is. Again, probably not here, but if we move to Japan yeah, I think that's the thing, is it's not a problem yet here, so we don't have to solve for it. But I think we do need to figure out how to get more people to cremate. So maybe we first become missionaries for cremation. Yeah. And then Travel the world, a, a tell everyone hotel. about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that seems like a, the next step. In the process, especially if, um, you know, it's confirmed that aliens are real, that's going to throw religion right out the window. So we should maybe hop on that boat before mm-hmm. it, before it, you know, leaves the harbor. Okay. So okay. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm internalizing. So we have to become missionaries. <laughs> for... Yeah, to preach the good word of cremation. Okay. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna. We can. We just turn our Twitter into a cremation missionary page. Yeah. And then we can go door to door, and and you know ask people, you know, if they have cremation in their life, or we could just be like, what are your plans after death? How would you like to be a vinyl record? Mm-hmm. I don't think people are aware of all the options. So I feel like that's the really thing. Just, people are like, I don't want to be ashes. But then we just have to be like, but it doesn't stop with ashes. There's so much yeah. more. You can you, know? you can keep on giving. You can keep on making an impact yeah. on this place after you're gone. 
We just need through. to inform. People are just uninformed. That's you know? it. People are ignorant. Yeah. People are ignorant. And we have a job. That, I've been convinced during this podcast I'm definitely getting cremated. Great. Well, that is step one. Um, I think the religious piece is going to get in the way a little bit. Well, that's why we really need this alien thing to take off. Mm-hmm. Because, um, yeah, because then, you know, religion goes bye-bye. If aliens arrive. If aliens exist. Yeah. Then religion goes bye-bye. That one seems harder to prove. Well, it's definitely going to take some time, and I don't know how much it'll be proved in our lifetime. So, but yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a tricky part. Don't you kind of wish we just lived in a world of, like, men in black a little bit? Yeah, well, it's getting to seem more and more like that. Did you uh, happen to take a peek at the Bob Lazar nope. uh, Joe I Rogan podcast? I haven't yet, but I've learned Pretty about fascinating. this guy today from you guys. Oh, so. you did? Yeah, there's apparently a documentary I'm supposed to watch on Netflix. Yeah, going to have to check that out. But um, yeah, it's getting, getting more and more, um, what's the right word, likely mm-hmm. that... Um, Aliens have been here. Maybe they are here. Um, that we have their technology. A bunch of stuff. So, wow. I, you know, the the existence of a man in black may not be uh, that crazy. You know, honestly, all I can say is I, I just hope they like me. The aliens? Yeah. Well, the, the, um, the theory that seems most likely to me right now is that they are observing us like we are observing primates like Jane Goodall went to live with the primates Mm -hmm. that's kind of like the theory is they're just kind of watching us like we watch the monkeys and seeing how we uh, develop yeah so you know I you know don't attack them and I bet they'll like you Okay. I, I don't think my initial reaction was going to be to attack. Is it not? Because that's not what people have said their initial reaction would be. I just, I don't feel like I know enough about what the counter attack would be that like attacking just also just seems ignorant, you know? Oh, it seems like they would just wipe us out instantly. Yeah. See, I'm not interested in that. I would rather go the approach of like, maybe they'll want to be my friend first. I would love that. I would say, take me with you. Mm-hmm. Let me see mm-hmm. what else is out there. Um, I know a person, and you know a person. I won't name names. I know a person, and I won't name names, who is pretty convinced that um, aliens live among us, mm. so far as it could be our next door neighbor. Oh, oh, your next door neighbor? I mean, not mine specifically, just in general, next door neighbors. Hmm. Okay. What do you think about that? Um. Sure. Yeah, you're into that theory. Um. I mean, why not? I guess. I don't feel like I need. I'll to... say. Hmm. You don't feel like you need to what? I don't feel like I need to like prepare like if my next door neighbor does happen to be an alien like it's been just fine for a while yeah so i don't think i need to do anything about it yeah definitely doesn't have me worried Mm -hmm. um i don't know that i believe that i wouldn't say definitely not but um you know lisa brought up some good points like do they go to the doctor do they have jobs how did they get those jobs? Do they have a social security number? Uh, a social security number? Um, which I think, you know, if if it was true, they they would probably easily be able to get all that stuff. Yeah. Um, who knows, though? There's also theories that, like, they combine their DNA with our DNA, and that's why we advanced and... There's theories that they created us, but like there's a weird missing link in DNA apparently that um, is unexplained and 
aliens could be an explanation for that. Okay. Um. The I don't know. Truth is, just it's uh pretty unknown. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have to watch that documentary though about yeah. Bob Lazar. I'm gonna check it out. Maybe today. I'll get back to you on what I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, give me an update, kind of like your um, uh, Avengers yeah. updates where you had to watch oh, all the yeah, Marvel yeah. movies. Yeah, I'll give you an update. So, I yeah, have another an question for you. Sure, hit me. I got an what answer, th- hopefully. What do you think about this new thing that the people are doing where they're, like, deciding they don't need to vaccinate children? Is that new? I feel like that's been a thing for a while now. I know. It's a continued thing. What do you think about it? Anti-vaxxers. I think that they're stupid. (laughs) I think so, too. (laughs) They're kind of annoying me. I think their child is going to be the reason there's another measles outbreak. Like the one that's happening? Isn't there a measles outbreak in California right now? Is there? Yeah, in in the Bay Area. That's not great. Right by me. Did you get your shots? I don't know. I feel <laughs> like I've been vaccinated. Do I get them again? Yeah, you should have. Um. Yeah, it's thirty eight cases. Wow. So I think far. you're supposed to get updated. Um, I definitely had to get updated. When I was going to grad school, and yeah, yeah, definitely to do it when I was going to grad school. Um, this weird thing happens with me though is no matter how many MMRs I get, which are the measles, mumps, rubella shot, mm-hmm. um, it doesn't work. The vaccination. Yeah. So like, I always have this thing where. I don't know. It comes up negative that I'm vaccinated or something. And it, uh, it's not like a me specific thing. I think this happens to a lot of people, but I have to get something specifically signed that says it it, it doesn't work. But um, it's weird. And I don't know if that means like I'm just naturally immune or if I just can't be immune. And so I'm boned if, if I come in contact with measles. Hmm. I should look that up. I should, because I should probably know. Yeah. Uh, MMR vaccine doesn't work on me. <laughs> the vaccine non-responder. I feel like that's that's me. I'm a non-responder. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Why do some people fail to respond? Some individuals experience symptomatic or asymptomatic infection despite previous immunization. Vaccine failure. Okay, primary and secondary host factors may lead to vaccine failure. In primary vaccine failure, the patient fails to develop an immune response to the vaccination. Um, The causes include host immune factors such as immunosuppressive therapies and recognize immune deficiency illnesses. I don't have either of those, hmm. but can occur in a small proportion of otherwise immunocompetent individuals. So that's me. I'm immunocompetent, okay. but I do not develop an immune response to the vaccination. Okay. Uh, secondary vaccine failure is where the patient develops an initial immune response, but when subsequently challenged with natural infection, the protective response is inadequate to prevent disease. So that one's not me, I don't think. So I also don't think I'm naturally immune. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, Uh, here's the thing. Yeah. You know how like people have like the, what's it called? Like the... It's like a herding theory or something. A herding theory? Yeah, like they're saying like, oh, I don't need to get vaccinated because other people around me did. You know? That seems um, incorrect. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Because what I've been reading says that 95% of a community needs to be vaccinated to prevent like measles outbreaks. 
So if everyone's mm-hmm. like, oh, I don't need to because this person did or, you know, like it's just trickle down problem. And also, what if you travel to another community? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't heard that. That's interesting. But I have heard all the people who don't want to get vaccinations because they think it causes uh, autism or something in their child. Mm. Okay. Which I'm pretty sure is proven to be not true. Yeah. Um, I've heard a case where like all, not all of the vaccinations you get as a kid are necessary, but most of them are. Not all are necessary, but most? Yeah, I've heard that. I heard there's maybe some unnecessary ones, but for the most part, you should get your vaccinations. Yeah, I think it's a thing that people should do. The moral of my story was I'm against the the anti-vaxxers. I'm anti-anti-vaxxers. I am also anti-anti-vaxxers. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that's, you know, we developed modern medicine for a reason. Polio's not a thing for a reason mm-hmm. um, because of vaccinations. Yeah. I agree, man. Facts. I agree. Um, you know, I don't know. People believe some crazy shit like that and like the flat earth thing. Oh, the flat and, earth uh, thing is wild. Yeah, what else are some crazy things that people believe? Um crazy, I don't even know how to google that. People. Hmm believe uh, misconceptions maybe I mean are they technically conspiracy theories I don't know if like the vaccination thing is considered a conspiracy theory yeah mm, some of them are if you just google I'm on a page telling me a list of conspiracies vaccination comes up on that okay, okay. let me tell you some other ones um yeah. There's so many. Are there? Yeah. Like, uh, like big ones or like very niche specific ones? I'm looking for something weird. Uh, what do you mean by weird? I don't know. Like, there's ones like global warming and flat earth and things I about mean, like government and politics. Okay, I mean, some like people not believing in global warming is pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. Oh, this is a fun one. Some theorists one? believe that Denver International Airport stands above an underground city, which serves as a headquarters of the New World Order. Theorists wow. cite the airport's unusually large size. It's distance from Denver City Center, as well as assorted alleged Masonic or Satanic symbols and a set of murals, which include depictions of war and death. So what? Denver Airport is the HQ of the New World Order. That's what? fascinating. Underneath? Underneath. The whole Next New World Denver Order Airport. theory states that a group of international elites controls government, industry, media organizations with the goal of establishing global... I don't know what that word means. I'm going to skip Which it. word is that? <laughs> I'm going to Google it first. Okay. All right. Hegemony. Leadership or dominance. Hed- Okay. Okay. Uh, that's wow. so. That's that. So maybe I don't know. That's I mean, the Denver airport does have that. Like, um, I think we talked about this at one point because I was going there, and then I googled it. Like the the Lucifer, Lucifer. The Lucifer is that what you just said? <laughs> yeah. His, What's the Lucifer? It's the blue Mustang at the Denver airport. They call him Lucifer. He's the demon Mustang horse. Mustang as in horse? Yeah, the demon horse of the Denver airport. I don't think we talked about this. Is this a statue? 
Yeah, it is. And he's known as Blucifer because um, he's a 32-foot sculpture of a Bronco. And it was commissioned as public wow. art for the airport, installed in 2008. Um, so the... Artist Luis Jimenez, uh, uh, in 2006, he died after a section of the 9,000 pound sculpture fell on him and severed 9, an artery. 9,000 pounds? Yeah, severed an artery in his leg. And then two years later, the, um, the horse was, I guess, completed, went on display at the airport, and it has its blue, glowing red eyes and a fierce like face immediately attracted public attention and people were like it's ugly and blah 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 and it killed the artist um i think other people have died though like someone that was refinishing it or something also died like fell off wow. of it yeah blucifer that's cra- I'm seeing a picture. The red eyes is crazy. Mm-hmm. Wow. How is that? Uh, how is that happening? I'm not sure. Why but you like see him red? when you fly in. I guess depending on what direction you're coming from. But uh, yeah, I mean it's huge. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to find this World Order headquarters the next time I'm at Denver Airport. I think you're gonna have to like dig a hole or something. Huh. It's 32 feet. That's pretty tall. Um, yeah, it is pretty freaking tall. Wow. Huh, that's interesting. Um, oh, this side I'm on also there. says that boxing in general is like a conspiracy theory. Bo- as in the sport? Yeah. Like, what? Like, there's a lot of... F- f- um fights that are claimed to be like fixed oh that's real yeah yeah boxing's pretty corrupt i don't know how much anymore but at least for a while it was very corrupt and a lot of fights were fixed and the matchmaking is fixed and stuff Mm -hmm. yeah that's pretty real you know what else is a weird thing people believe in Hmm. um like crystals Oh, yeah. And, like, crystal energy. That's, like, oh, what that's about those cra- things? I think that's crazy. Or, like, tarot cards. You ever seen, like, those beauty, like, crystal or, like, quartz rollers? Rollers? Yeah. What do you mean, rollers? Google, Google like, a quartz roller. Quartz roller. Quartz. So you can buy these at like makeup or beauty stores or whatever. And it's basically just like you're supposed to like roll it over your face. And it's like rock. <laughs> yeah. And what do they say it does? Um, Let me tell you. It's, um... It says, by rolling them across your cheeks, chin, and forehead, you'll slowly open up pathways and improve lymphatic flow, which reduces puffiness and inflammation. The best way to use a crystal facial roller is always at room temperature. There's no need to cool it as it will already feel cool to the skin. Use light pressure. Uh, Always start at the... Decollet, what the what the f does that word mean? And neck, as this opens pathways and creates flow for effective drainage. What? This quartz roller is twenty five dollars. Neckline, decolletage. I mean, isn't it just like, okay, Kathleen Lassan, a certified lymphedema therapist in San Diego. Wrote the book, author, uh, wrote the book, author, is the author of the book, Swollen, Bloated, and Puffy, recommends facial rollers to her clients to reduce swelling. If refrigerated, 
The rollers provide a small amount of relief from swelling. Yeah, it's like an ice pack. Mm-hmm. It just seems like it's there's so many other solutions, but we're obsessed with crystal rollers. The main way face rollers help the lymphatic system is when they are used to stretch facial skin in the direction of lymph nodes in front of the ears. I don't know why that's helpful. That doesn't make any sense to me. Should I get one? You might as well try it. We could do a review on it. Why don't you try it for a while, see if it works, and we'll revisit the topic. I don't understand it. Is it just like exfoliating? I don't think so, though, because you're just like straight up rubbing it on your face. That seems not scientific. (laughs) <laughs> no, it doesn't. And they were like, let's just make these a pretty stick. I bet they're all made by the same supplier, too. <laughs> <laughs> like, none of these look different. They all, they all have pink? a big roll and a little roll. Which, why do you need two rolls? Sure. Well, you know, like, a bigger one for your neck, a little one for, like, your, your nose, and, like... I don't uh, think I need a... A big and little. I think I could have figured it out. Yeah. Maybe just a little one. Yeah. This there's a limited time deal on this one. It's usually twenty four ninety nine on Amazon and now it's eight ninety nine. Oh, I'll snatch that up. That's a great deal. It seems like it. Oh, it's a large roller for cheeks and forehead, small roller for eye region. Oh, <laughs> For, for your eyeballs. Yeah. So when you want to put the roll your eyeballs out. There's unique silicone oh, inserts to ensure a non-squeaky rolling. Yeah, because that would be annoying. That's <laughs> stupid. Probably cost just, an extra four dollars for that part. I just don't think I can even spend eight dollars on this. I don't. I know that it seems like a great deal on a rock. I just don't find it to be necessary. You know? I mean, I didn't even know it was a thing until just now, so. Yeah, it's a thing. Um, Okay, another theory, though, that I think is kind of interesting, because I feel like I remember this being a thing, but the concept of, like, okay. fluoride. Oh, uh, like, what about it? Like, water fluoridation added. Or, like, when yeah. fluoride was added to public water supplies to reduce tooth decay. I think, I thought that was a myth, but maybe not. No, I don't I think I do remember it was a big thing for a while, like, don't drink the tap water because there's fluoride in it. Yeah. Was it? Was it actually in it? I or think was the it myth was. that it's bad? Uh, is it bad? I think I think the myth is that um uh, hmm uh, I don't know. I think that the myth is about the tooth decay part. Like if you if it really helps tooth decay, I'm not sure. Here, let me read you some myths and facts about fluoride. Fact okay. number one. Fluoride occurs naturally in water, though usually not at a high enough level to protect teeth. Okay. Um, fact number two. Fluoride has been recognized as an important nutrient for healthy teeth. Uh, fact number three. Fluoridation is the most cost-effective way to prevent tooth decay and build healthy communities. Um, fact number four, fluoridation is a public health measure, a modest community-wide investment that benefits everyone. I go to page two. Fact number five, fluoridated water is the best way to protect everyone's teeth from decay. Um, so it was like basically forcing people that don't go to the dentist to do something for their teeth. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like that. Very high fluoride concentrations can lead to a condition called fluorosis. Nearly all fluorosis in the U.S. is mild. This condition Mm. does not cause pain and does not affect the health or the function of the teeth. So what does it do? (laughs) 
it causes faint white specks on teeth. Um, hmm. In 2015, the CDC proposed a new level of fluoridation, 0.7 parts per million. I don't know what that means. Um, hmm. Here's a here's a uh, question for you. Okay. Since you've spent um, a lot of time at chiropractors, mm, I have yep. heard a lot of people say chiropractic medicine is a bunch of nonsense and fake and mm, created by a crazy person. What's your take on that? People say that all the time. I have a lot of coworkers that I'll be like, I gotta go because I have a chiropractor appointment. And then they'll be like, oh, you're a witch doctor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, my witch doctor. I don't know. I guess I hear that a lot. Here's some things. I have a lot of chiropractor friends. So... Mm-hmm. I'm like I don't I don't know I don't think my friends are idiots, but it also really helps me. I get a lot of back pain, and I think it really helps. It so, does help you, huh? I wouldn't go to the chiropractor to treat all of my life's problems. Sure. However, my back, knee, hip pain has been controlled through a lot of chiropractic. Hmm. Huh. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I don't have enough experience with chiropractors to really know. I usually go for like one session and then I'm out. Yeah, I think um, you have to go for more than one. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I've heard a lot of weird things about like the creator of chiropractic medicine. It's like a super Chiro- hippie. No, more like we like create like a murderer or something. <laughs> really? His name's yeah. Daniel David Palmer. What's it say about him? He was an avid proponent of various forms of pseudoscientific alternative medicine, such as magnetic Pseudo. healing. Oh. Oh, he's an anti vaxxer. Hmm. Oh, no. I know. Shoot. Huh, very spiritual, it looks like. Yeah. Uh. So here's my thing about why I kind of like chiropractic. Okay. I think the root of it kind of makes sense. Like, when I have really bad... Like, all thinking about, like, your body and how everything's connected, I feel like you can solve a lot of problems by, like, understanding what nerves or muscles connect everything to find, like, the source mm-hmm. of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, when I have knee pain, it's usually because, like, my IT band is really tight and I need to work yeah. that, you know, like, things like that. So then when my back hurts and my hips are like usually misaligned and then I start running weird and causing knee pain. So I just feel like the connectivity across the body makes sense to me, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's real. Do you think that's like, do we need both chiropractors and physical therapists? Because I feel I like physical, physical therapists therapy. fix the, that problem. I hate physical why, why do you therapy. hate physical therapy? I think it's dumb. What do you mean it's dumb? <laughs> what? I think I can Google it. Google like... Like, I have a knee pain. The... What's a good stretch? Then I don't need to go to a face- physical therapist. Well, I think they preach the same things. Like, a lot of times where your pain is isn't where, like, the cause of the pain. Yeah. Okay, sure. I mean, they're similar. For example, I get a lot of knee pain. Yeah. Because my hamstrings are so tight all the time, and my uh, mostly my hamstrings. Okay. <laughs> or my hip flexors is what I was the other thing I was thinking of. Um. Yeah. So they know. probably preach the same concept. So why do we hate one and not the other? Good question. I, I don't know. know. One's a more 
like Eastern alternative style. I think, you know, because chiropractics are often bunched together with like acupuncture and that cupping stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I think, uh, I think it's just a ego thing between Eastern and Western medicine. Yeah. I'll tell you what we, uh, Maybe should or shouldn't give more thought to, but I'm I'm still looking at this list of weird things people are into. And one of them is rumpology. Are you familiar with rumpology? No. Well, um <laughs> I'm go going. The next time you're caught staring at someone's bum, oh. just tell them you're a rumpologist giving a free psychic reading. Wow, that is <laughs> weird. Astrology with two S's. Bottom reading. <laughs> a pseudoscience. This seems like Apparently. a... Apparently. Like a pedophile creation. Well, apparently everyone's bum is unique. Um, that, that I could agree with. But this Sam Amos, this, this rumpologist, explains that a round bottom suggests a person is open, happy, and optimistic, whereas a flat bottom can mean someone is vain, negative, and sad. Okay. <laughs> she claims that... Um, I don't think that's correct. Oh, my God. The number one rumpologist in America mm-hmm. is Sylvester Stallone's mom. What? <laughs> Jacqueline Stallone. She claims that the left cheek reveals a person's past and the right cheek reveals their future. And the crack represents the line separating the two hemispheres of the brain. Hmm. Stallone says she is simply reviving an ancient art which dates back to the early Babylonians, Indians, Greeks, and Romans. Hmm. While most butt readers prefer to examine a client's rear in person, Stallone can provide a reading with only a digital photograph and $125. Okay. <laughs> crazy. Oh my god, there's some crazy medical practices. Psychic surgery is a thing. Psychic is- surgery? Yeah, apparently um, psychic surgeons claim that they can heal people who are suffering from cancer and other potentially terminal diseases merely through touch. They don't have to go into the body. That's like some weird, like, I can solve all of your problems with essential oils type of thing. Yeah, or like crystals, or like Reiki. Do you know what Reiki is? Reiki? Yeah, Reiki is this weird thing where they like float their hands over your body and it's they're like healing your energy or something <laughs> interesting for sure yeah okay hmm. man what else is on this list here body earthing what is body earthing um, something that processed foods, sedentary lifestyles, or increased exposure to toxins are among the causes to uh, modern diseases. But according to body earthers, we're simply not spending enough time with our bare feet in wet grass. <laughs> okay. So, we're not having enough earth to skin contact. Ugh, urine therapy. People who believe in drinking urine. Okay. Um, this is a word I don't know. Memetics? Um, what is memetics? According to those who promote memetics, um, memes. Oh, it's memes. Memetics. Mm. These are about memes. So, um, memes are units of culture capable of evolving and self replicating just like human genes. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, 
Well, the last one on the list is dousing. Do you know what dousing is? We used to like do this as kids, I, I think. It's where you hold a stick and you believe that the stick can help you locate things. Like we used to do it with water. This like a stick face like a Y or a V or something okay. can help you find water. But these people think um, it could also point you to the location of oil and metal and gems and gravestones. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Okay. So there's, there's a lot some, out there. There's a lot of weird things out there. Yeah. Um. Well, I think um, that's all she wrote for today. Yeah, I think so too. Solid hour. So, thanks, thanks for listening. Um, you can find us on. Oh, we're the Pod Cafe, by the way. If you don't know. The Pod Cafe. You can find us on Google Play, Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Libsyn, anywhere you find your podcast. You can tweet at us at the underscore Pod Cafe, and you can even email us at um, podcafe.contact at gmail.com. And if you got any weird beliefs, we would love to hear them. Hey, I'm, I'm Nick. Welcome to the Pod Cafe. Okay. And we're done. <laughs>